Hey, how's it going, everyone? Brad Smith here with the Relationship Marketing Podcast. Today, I'm here with Hannah, our moderator. How are you today, Hannah? Good. How are you, Brad? Doing great. Thank you, everyone, so much for joining us today. And we give you simple, easy steps you can copy and paste into your business or even simple things you can do to start your business, which goes along with our topic today. Hannah, what are we chatting about today? Yeah, guys, so we're going to chat about how to start a business online, whether you're in college, you already have a job, but you want some more um, financial freedom. I think this is starting to become the new wave. Um, so, Brad, how would you go about this? What are they call, calling it now? There's some some phrase words, solopreneur. Yeah, uh, the one you brought to me. Multipreneur, I think is good. Entrepreneur, that's the normal yes. one. Yes. An entrepreneur yes. is somebody that takes financial risk. So, you know, a lot of people say I'm an entrepreneur, but they don't know what the meaning of it is. You know, a business owner, you can start a business and you're not really taking a financial risk if you're not investing in the business, you're just starting it from scratch. Uh, but usually when you're starting online, you do have to take a, some sort of financial risk. You have to pay for a website. You have to take some time starting. I do like the solopreneur if you're not thinking about building a big business. That's what I want to kind of separate today is who are you? So our listeners and viewers of this uh, Relationship Marketing Podcast, who are you? Are you somebody that is in college wanting to start something on your own in the future? Do you already have a job, a nine to five job, and maybe you're sick of it? Um, that was me. I had a nine to five job and I started my own online business part-time while I transitioned out of that. Or do you want to build a big company, right? So right. there's so many, so many pe people out there. And so we'll try to cover, think, let's try to cover all the different angles, you know, so think about who you are and what you want, and then we'll try to cover those in this. Definitely. So, um, wait, crap, I just forgot my <laughs> No, just you can feed right off of that one. So I'll clap and you can just say, you know, you know, depending on that, like, you know, I, you can start with talking about how you were in college and you started your business. How would you recommend that if you want to start there? Okay. Yeah, well, I'll cut this part out. Don't worry. Okay. All right. It's hard once you lose the momentum. I know. Uh. It's, it, it's all good. Well, we were just talking about taking risk and think about who you are and, you know, what you want to accomplish with maybe starting a business online, being a solopreneur, an entrepreneur, you want to start something big, something small, you know, we right. will try to cover every angle for you all in this podcast. Yeah. And I think that, you know, this kind of relates to when you're producing content and you want to push out content, you have to think about your target audience. So I think that I'm, I really like that you said that because you can see that those things kind of apply everywhere in this field. Um, I'm also in college, I'm just finishing up my senior year. Uh, what would you say, like, can you define each one, solopreneur, multipreneur, and just a plain old entrepreneur for us, please? Yeah, and now is the best time. So if anyone's listening or watching, Hannah's doing it right. She started you know, flipping uh, shoes, flipping clothes. She started her own thing part-time while she was in college. And I would call that a solopreneur because you're doing it by yourself. You don't need employees. Um, so an entrepreneur maybe is somebody that's going to plan on building a business, take financial risk that way, maybe get employees, build something big. Solopreneur is somebody that just wants to do it on their own. That's the new, like, you know, popular thing right now. Do it on your own, maybe get a virtual assistant and um, not trying to build a big company. But that's going to get into my next point and doing something you're passionate about as well. Then a multipreneur is somebody, you know, maybe like me that has multiple companies. Um, I have nonprofits. I invest in companies. So somebody that has multiple things happening, but doesn't need a huge team, right? You're not building a huge corporation. That kind of goes into the next thing I want to talk about is, you know, now if you're just starting out or want to start out, that is the best time to pick something you're passionate about. Because this isn't easy. Um, I did a Twitter post today about it really took me 18 months to make any money online. Like I was I had my nine to five job and I was doing this after I got off of work and I was trying to build a website and do all of that. And it took me 18 months. So if you think it's easy, it's not going to be easy. But if you're patient, 
and you work hard, you'll get there. So, you know, Hannah, I think to your point, you started doing something on the side that was part-time, but you enjoyed it or you're passionate about it, right? Right. And patience is key, no matter where your entrepreneurship or solopreneurship, whatever, wherever it takes you, patience is key. And, um, you know, I can only speak for myself, but when you're going along that journey of trying to figure out, because it also took me a long time to start seeing the results, but that's because behind the scenes, I became passionate about wanting to know the strategy behind things and trying to do it right the first time. But obviously I made mistakes along the way. So I think to lay it out for our viewers, what is something, how would you go about starting this business and what things would you avoid? Yeah, that, that's a good question. So number one is what we just talked about. Find something you're passionate about because it's going to be hard. It's going to take time. You're going to mess up. So you want to be able to still be able to want to do it. If you're like, if I was doing something about something I'm not passionate about, like cooking, I would never be able to keep building a business about cooking because I hate cooking. So, right. I mean, I could totally do a whole business around Uber Eats, having food delivered to me because I'm passionate about that. So, yes. Uh, but so that's the key because you got to stick with it for a long time. So when the times are hard, when they're difficult, when you want to give up, if you're passionate about it, it makes it a lot easier. From there, then you got to find out if there's even an audience for it. So, you know, if you are trying to build something that people don't use anymore or they're not buying anymore, I don't know what's something, you know, old that's been taken over by technology. I don't know. If you're trying to build a taxi cab business, talking about Uber Eats, it's probably a bad idea because people aren't using taxi cab services anymore. So it's a waste of time. So you want to think of something maybe that's coming up in the future. A lot of people are doing AI. You want to, so you want to match that. Okay. What's something coming up? What's something popular and that will stay popular. So you don't want to do something that is maybe really strong now, but will disappear in a couple of years. Um, so you don't want to just ride a wave because it's popular, but you want to find something that will be sustainable. Um, you know, tra people that do travel blogs, that's a great idea. You're passionate about traveling. Mm -hmm. um, there's a huge audience for it. And I don't think traveling will ever go away unless the borders get shut down again, right? So, right. but that's my last point. All right, you found something you're passionate about. You found something that's sustainable that will be popular for a long time. Then the last thing is you got to see how much competition the more competition, the longer and harder you got to work. So that's the key. The more unique, the more different you have to be. Hey, travel blogs are so oversaturated. There's so many people doing it. But if you're the best TikTok dancer out of all of them, you have a, you know, you have a head start. But if you're just normal like them, all of them, you either will never get popular or you got to wait a long time. So those are just some things to keep in mind when picking out your niche, picking out what industry right. and what thing you're is going to be popular. Yeah, I would I would say that personally the most sustainable industries are the most dynamic. So like digital marketing, it's always changing, so there's always new ways to get ahead. Um and similar with the clothing, like shoe reselling and clothing, I mean, trends are always changing. So that's dynamic, you know. I'm finding the holes that people other people don't see and filling it with my solution. Um being different. Yeah. So that was yeah, exactly. Being unique. Um, and then that goes into the whole what platform should you be pushing? So could you tell us a little bit about like some examples of um uh, a business type and what you would recommend, he, what platforms, like whether it's Google My Business, Twitter, X, now. That that goes into, I think, some, finding something you're passionate about. Think about what you spend the most time on. And I think your phone even will tell you what apps you're on the most. And by the way, it's really hard to grow one of them, let alone all of them. So I always say, hey, when you're first starting out, choose one platform that you enjoy using. If you mm -hmm. love TikTok, choose that to be the one you start with. If you love Twitter or if you love YouTube, which I love, YouTube's my favorite. So I put all of my effort into YouTube first and then Instagram and Facebook, they all come after. So right. in the future. So find something that you are always on 
Like I'm never on TikTok. I don't even have the app on my phone. So why would I make content on TikTok, right? So right. you have to have one platform to find customers or have customers find you. And then you have to have one place to send them. And that's something we can dive into next is where to send people. So, but I want to finish covering the audience and choosing that one channel. Once you choose that channel, let's say it's YouTube or TikTok, you have to start teaching. And that's one thing that I want to warn people with. When you're starting out, whether, you know, we didn't dive into this, but let's say you have a nine to five job, you want to start something online, you know, you got to start doing it after work or early in the morning or on the weekends, right? You don't, your natural instinct is to start telling everyone, hey, I've got this new business, go buy this stuff. Hate to break it to you, no one cares and no one's going to buy it. Your mom might buy it, your cousin might mm -hmm. buy it, but no one else is buying it. So your natural instincts to start selling. And that's where when you pick your channel, let's say you pick YouTube, your first instinct and the first thing you need to do is start educating. So you found something you're passionate about, something you want to build a business around, so, but you have to start teaching first. Hey, and if you're thinking, especially if you're starting out, you're probably are going to have, what's the word? Not intruder syndrome, uh, but. Uh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> imposter uh, syndrome. I was so close. I was so close. You're going to have imposter syndrome. That's totally fine. Start talking about things you already know. If you're passionate about it, you already know. If you're a golfer and you love golf, you can go on and start talking about golf. Maybe just start talking about how bad you are at golf. You know, maybe that's where you can start. <laughs> that's that's yeah. where I would start. I suck at golf. This is my YouTube channel. But at least you're, but this is what I would do if I sucked at golf. I'm taking lessons. This is what my coach taught me, right? So you want to educate, educate, because when you educate, people will learn from you. And then when they're ready to buy, they'll come by. And that's what I want to just make sure everyone's aware of is as soon as you start finding that one platform and you start posting, Make it educational. And that's why I created the professor method, um, which Hannah, you're familiar with, is sure. become the professor in your industry and teach people because then they're going to trust you. You're going to stand out. You're going to be different. And I think the most important, you'll be the authority in that industry while all the other competitors are, you know, talking about, you know, these awesome golf clubs. You're the one talking about how to use the golf club effectively. And they're going to come and buy that golf club from you instead of your competitors because you're teaching something. So just yeah. a really good way to start. Yeah, I, I think I see that a lot in the fitness industry. Um, You know, you don't just walk into the gym and know what you're doing unless you have when you first start a really, really good coach. Um, And so a lot of people have made have had great success with sharing that journey from day one when they walked into that gym and didn't know anything. And then, you know, people get invested in that stuff. Uh, so I think that kind of content works actually really good for industries like that, because the fitness industry is also very dynamic. There's all different kinds of trends. So Every stick day. out by being the worst fitness person in the world as and possible. transforming. <laughs> oh, that's a great point, by the way, Hannah. I don't know if you saw the personal trainer that purposely got fat just to see how hard it was to lose weight. Yep. And he went viral. So you have to take that different approach. And you can start off by being fat and showing how you get in shape. And then you teach more, even more and more. So. And, and I feel like for the trainer, that must be like, that is the definition of putting yourself in someone's shoes. Oh, and yeah. so now imagine the knowledge that he has about losing weight, but he also knows how hard it is. So he can sympathize with the people that are coming to him. And so not only did he go viral, but he gets more knowledge. Even more. Yeah. Cause now he, now he's going to be able to show empathy towards his customers, which he probably wasn't able to before. So um, I have a question for you, Hannah. So yeah. your final year in college, um, you work for me now, you have your own business, you're doing awesome, you're learning, you're taking the time. Where would you start next? So let's say you picked out your platform, let's say it's TikTok, you start teaching people things about shoes on TikTok. How do you start actually making money? What's the next step? That's a good question. I I'll, think I'll help you answer this, but like, what's I'm your first I'm going to take a stab assumption? at it. Yeah. I think 
So I'll, I'll go with the shoe example. Um, there is a lot of, I mean, obviously I keep up with the shoe trends. So I know the, um, the biggest shoe people that have a YouTube channel have an audience. But the thing with them is that they always look the same. Um, there's not a lot of girls that are doing it. One. So I feel like TikTok would definitely be one of my top platforms just because my I know my target audience and I know that they're on TikTok. So it's going to take time. That's why I'd, I'd like to start developing multiple things. So then over time, I'm going to be glad that I started when I did. Does Where, that answer your question? Um, not yet. Not 100% yet. Where would you send them? So you built the audience on TikTok. You taught them stuff about shoes. You stick out because you're a female. You send them to a website, to a landing page, like I guess, or they call you, they send you a DM. I guess, where would you, what would you be your guess on the next step? Uh, I, I would send them to a landing page. I think I would try to take, like content isn't the whole plan for me. Yeah. That I would go up, I would want to scale that. You can scale content um, and I like content, but it would be to promote the other things that I'm also doing within that industry. So I, I would definitely have a website with different landing pages um, because I think I'd also like to have a newsletter and that would be a great way to get emails on my email list. I'm glad I asked you that. And that was a perfect answer because you know, if you're just listening to this and, or you're watching this on YouTube, um, by the way, we're on podcasts and YouTube here. So hello to everyone listening and watching. Um, but you might not know what to do next. Like, yeah, I need to be on social media, but did you know a lot of the social media influencers don't make a lot of money or if any money at all, they maybe make money off sponsorships through DM, mm -hmm. but they're not building a company or building something autom automated or sustainable. Um, what if you want to change niches also? What if you're talking about shoes, but you want to switch to, um, you know, something else? So talking about computers or the latest phones, so you might want to switch. So that's where, and you, oh, by the way, you probably don't have a lot of money yet. You don't have this huge company. So you're getting paid by your nine to five or you're a college student. You also don't have a lot of money to go build a huge website. So there's plenty of resources out there now that you can use. Like a software we recommend is Duda. I mean, it's $25 a month. You can have a whole website um, and, or we recommend something like MailerLite. You can start, they have landing pages and then you can send newsletters through it. So you get the both of both, both, both of best, both worlds and best of both worlds, but can't even talk. Yeah, it's okay. It is. It's a mouthful. <laughs> but like something I would recommend is something like MailerLite. You get the landing page and you get the emails. Why? Because when they see you on TikTok, the algorithm will change just like Facebook change and Instagram change. TikTok will not show your posts to your followers someday. Yeah, they may now, but they won't someday. So on Instagram, they don't show posts to your followers. They don't care about you. But if you had started on TikTok and you got right. them to the landing page, 10 bucks a month, and you collected their email addresses, now you can continue following up so you don't have to rely on TikTok because by the way, TikTok might shut you off. It might, sure. the algorithm will change. You might have to switch to something else. There might be a new social media someday. And now all you have to do is send out a quick email and say, hey, this is my new industry. This is my new niche. This is my new offering. This is my new sale. Right. This is my new social media platform. So trying to get people's emails is really going to be your key when you're starting out because that way you never have to rely on anyone else but yourself. That's what happens now when I look at some influencers, which good for them. But I wonder, I'm like, I wonder if they have email automation, if they have all these things. Like right now I, I do use TikTok, but I'm sending them to like the apps that I used to sell right in my bio right there. And immediately sales started. Once I was patient, I kept building my audience consistency, putting out content every day. I built an audience. And some of them have become like my most loyal customers. So it's definitely 
now that I've seen the light, there's no going back. That's why I'm trying to warn people now, because it might take you two years to figure this out. And two years from now, the algorithm's screwed and you have no email subscribers to follow up with. So right. I'm glad you learned that early, but let's use this, um, this podcast to really teach others. Exactly. Yep. So how, I think that's our last thing we want to talk about today is how, what next? Like, how are you going to do this? And um, how did you tr do it in college? So you're busy with college, right? You're, you got classes, you got to study, like, did you do it on the weekends or what? Um, I think what I did, they call it the, you have the nine to five and then you have the five to nine. So <laughs> I like that. Um, a lot of, after my classes, I would spend time there would be specific parts of the day um, where I could take pictures of the clothing because lighting is important. So mm -hmm. I wasn't just I wasn't just concerned about putting content out. I was concerned about the quality of the content. So finding the right lighting, finding the right time of day and carving out that time because I wanted it so bad. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I think I would do that and then do all of my listings package things and then have a set time the next day where I would go to the UPS store and do it all over again the next day. But it was something, it is something that I enjoy. So working harder wasn't a big deal. No, I think, I don't think it should scare anyone away to try to find the time because it's going to teach you one better time management and you're going to start appreciating like romanticizing your life a little bit like oh this time to this time I'm going to go to class and then you kind of get into this routine and it's addicting once that success starts coming in you probably look forward to it during class like I can't wait till class is over so I can go work oh I would have a hundred percent rather be taking pictures and packaging than being in a class definitely What's yeah. the new, the new trend now is monk mode. You have to go into monk mode. Um, I did this with friends. I, we removed some friends out of our life. We removed some other habits. Up. I don't watch the news at all. I mean, there's so many different yeah, things neither. you remove from your life. So then you can focus on your future. And if you really want to make this work, you got to spend the next two years, focus on your future, go into monk mode and only worry about that. So, like, I had a, a job at a gym. I was working from 4.30 a.m. till 9 p.m. And then I started building my website on the weekends. Then I was able to do that long enough to where I went from 4.30 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the gym. And then from 2 to 10, I'd work on my website. Then I went from 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. and then work on the website. And then I quit and only worked on the website. So. Right. But that took 18, two years. I mean, I'm still working on the website. So exactly. Uh, but I look forward to it. I'm like, I can't wait until the weekend so I can work on the website. I can't wait until two so I can go home and build this thing online. So that's what you need to do is find once you have something you're passionate about and you have got your job or you've got your college classes, you're going to look forward to working harder because it's something you can see for your future. Then you just got to wait it out. You got to be different. You got to push and you got to hustle. That's really the key. Yeah. And I think that, you know, pushing yourself in that way is kind of like you said, with the monk mode, like you're going to start realizing what things in your life, whether it's people habits are really draining your energy. And hence, that's what, how you learn to cut things out and you learn what's best for you. So I think above anything, the thing that I appreciate the most about the process is the things I learn about myself, I would say. And that's those, your mindset and your goals and your commitment to your goals is what's going to ultimately carry you and help you scale whatever it is that you want to do. All right. Everyone listening and watching, you're going to learn a lot about yourself, mm -hmm. but you just have to take that step. You got to try it. And just like yep. my sign says, if you're on YouTube, make your move. Like it's now yes. or never. Who knows what the world's going to be like? Who knows what social media is, you know, what 
politicians, all this stuff. So your job may fire you, you know, who knows what's college is you probably won't even get a job after college if you're not passionate about it. So right. focus on yourself, build something you love, be patient. And I mean, and be ready to pivot when you need, because like you said, you don't know what's going to happen. So you don't have to watch the news to kind of get the trend of things because even with Google's generative AI, like now my Google searches look the way like, you know, YouTube videos on the top. Yep. So you watch these things slowly start to change. And once you start questioning things, you're going to find those answers and it's going to show you all of these holes that you could provide a solution to people. All right. That's next week's topic is how to pivot. Deal? Deal. Sounds All good. right, everyone watching and listening next week, we're going to talk about how to pivot. You found out something you love, you start building it. What next? You know, maybe it's not going to work out your first time, by the way. You choose that golf niche. You start telling people how bad you suck at golf on YouTube. Mm -hmm. You might not get any traction, so you might have to switch to something else. So let's yeah. talk about that next week. And thank you, everyone, for tuning in. If you're on the podcast, go thank subscribe you. to our YouTube. If you're on YouTube, back to the podcast, Relationship Marketing Podcast. I think in the future, we're going to dive into how to build better relationships and build that audience. And that's, that's why we do this. Lots of good stuff. Awesome. All right. Thanks everyone for watching and listening. We'll see you on the next one. Thank you. Bye.